Hereby, I open this academic ceremony at Maastricht University. First of all, I like to welcome uh, Mrs. Maria Piazza. She will defend her academic thesis, Novel Aspects of the Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System, a focus on hyperaldosteronism and glycation. Welcome to all members of the degree committee, and in particular to the four supervisors. Um, first of all, Professor Schalkwijk, he is Professor of Internal Medicine at Maastricht University. Professor Rossi, he is a Professor at the University of Padova, in Italy, and Head Clinica del Im Lipertensione Arteriosa, Rector Magnificus Delegata for Clinical Research. The co-supervisor is uh, Professor Seccia. She is Associate Professor in Internal Medicine, also at the University of Padova, Italy. And Dr. Hansen, he is Assistant Professor at the Department of Vascular and Internal Medicine at Amsterdam University Medical Center. Mrs. Piazza, may I invite you to give a summary of your thesis? Please go ahead. Thank you, dear colleague. Dear Prorector, dear members of Corona, dear family, friends, and audience, in the coming 50 minutes, I will shortly present the content of my uh, doctoral thesis. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally, uh, globally representing the 32% of all global death. According to the World Health Organization, about 8 million of people died from cardiovascular disease in 2019. And over three quarters of cardiovascular disease death take place in low and middle income countries. A central regulator of the cardiovascular function is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system of RAS. It is mainly comprised of three hormones, renin, angiotensin II, and aldosterone, whose main function is to control the blood pressure by regulation of the vasoconstriction, sodium, uh, sodium reabsorption, and body fluid homeostasis. A dysregulation of the RAS, including increasing the level of angiotensin II and aldosterone, uh, may contribute to the, de the development of hypertension and leading to the cardiovascular risk. Arterial hypertension or high blood pressure is uh, uh, the, one, uh, dry, uh, the one driver killer of heart disease. And over 1 billion of people around the world have hypertension. And this defined as a systolic blood pressure of 140 milliliter of mercury and a diastolic blood pressure of 19 milliliter of mercury. About 90% of, of the time, hypertension uh, occurs without a clear cause, and we call it, it uh, primary hypertension. There are a number of risk factors that have been identified, such as old age, obesity, isolated diet, and uh, sedentary lifestyle. And except for old age, all the other one can be, can be improved with the lifestyle change, and of course, decrease uh, the, the hypertension. But about 20% of the time, hypertension uh, happens with a specific underlying condition uh, that is the cause of hypertension. And we call this one secondary hypertension. And could be, for instance, a consequence of renal disease, like chronic kidney disease, a consequence of uh, renovascular disease, uh, or a consequence of obstructive sleep apnea but uh, can be also a consequence of endocrine disorder, such as the primary aldosteronism, that is the most common uh, and, uh, cause of endocrine hypertension with a prevalence of 11% in 
to, in referred to specialized center. Um, and is characterized by an autonomous production of aldosterone, uh, an excess aldosterone production of aldosterone by the uh, adrenal gland. Patients with primary aldosteronism have an high uh, risk of cardiovascular events and uh, target on uh, organ damage than patients with uh, essential or primary hypertension. So what is the problem? Despite all the knowledge that we have about uh, hypertension, some mechanisms are still to be uh, clarified. And in some cases, we still don't have an optimal treatment for hypertension. So in the present doctoral thesis, we look at two different mechanism, uh, mechanisms to improve approach to diagnosis and treating the disease. So during the joint PhD in Italy, we, fo we focus on the mechanism described the uh, excess aldosterone production by the adrenal gland. And in Maastricht, we study the interaction between the uh, glycation pathway and the renin angiotensin aldosterone uh, system. And uh, during my presentation, I will focus uh, mostly on, the, on this second part uh, during this presentation. Based on previous research, we know that there is an interaction between uh, glycation and the RAS system. Glycation is a reaction between a sugar, like uh, uh, glucose, and a protein. And uh, this spontaneous rearrangement produces ages. The same things happen when a sugar comes into contact with fat, and the same things up when uh, a sugar enter our the, uh, uh, enter in our DNA. Ages are a part of our daily life and they can uh, drive the aging process, process and irreversible damage our uh, tissue and organs. Age promotes uh, inflammation in joints and organs and they can even alter the way that the cell in the body work. But the most important precursors in the formation of glycation, more important, the sugar glucose is metaglyoxal. Metaglyoxal, or MGO, is mainly formed by the uh, uh, azabrium product of glycolysis. And under physiological circumstances, detoxify by the glyoxylase uh, system into the lactate with the glyoxylase 1 enzyme as the key enzyme in the anti-glycation defense. MGO is, uh, associated, uh, is, um, is associated with every chronic disease and is highly expressed in patients with diabetes and is also uh, implicated in cancer, obesity, atherosclerosis, disorder of central nervous system, but is also implicated in hypertension. Some experimental study have, in a pertinence rat have shown that increased activation of AT angiotensin type 1 receptor by angiotensin 2 has been linked to an increased formation of MGO via the regulation of the glyoxylase 1 enzyme. So high levels of angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor autoantibodies were detected in patients with, with aldosterone-producing adenoma. That is the most common subtype of primary hypertension, as we reported in chapter six. We also investigate if these autoantibodies are able to induce, uh, to activate the AT1 receptor. So we expose adrenocortical cell line to IgG isolated from serum of a patients and healthy subject. And uh, we investigate the expression, uh, the, the CP11B2 gene expression, uh, that is the, uh, uh, the, the key enzyme in the formation of aldosterone, and the aldosterone release in, uh, in the medium by these cells. And uh, we found 
that uh, angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor autoantibodies increase not only the CP11B2 gene expression, but also the aldosterone secretion, uh, secretion in, this, uh, in the medium of these cells. The rule of uh, 81 receptor was uh, uh, confirmed by, uh, by our experiment with irbesafan, that is a specific antagonist of 81 receptor. Of note, irbesafan blocked the aldosterone secretion induced by the angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor autoantibodies. So since we know that these autoantibodies have agonistic properties to the angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor, at least in vitro, and similar to the angiotensin 2, in chapter 7, we want to investigate if these autoantibodies are able to induce the MGO formation as we, uh, was reported for angiotensin 2. So we measure the MGO uh, serum levels in patients with aldosterone producing adenoma and found that serum levels of autoantibodies are not associated with the serum decarbonyl suggesting that maybe autoantibodies not reflect the MGO accumulation in the serum. I have to say that um, in several compounds, including uh, some antihypertensive drug like angiotensin receptor blocked, uh, blockers, reduce, reduce, uh, reduce the incidence of cardiovascular disease in, in, uh, in, in, in type 2 diabetes and lower the age levels and the, the inhibit the age formation in animal model. Therefore, uh, via, uh, sorry, uh, to, uh, to, uh, um, the, so we assume that the health benefit using this uh, angiotensin receptor blocker compound are due to the inhibit of effect of uh, MGO by upregulation of the glyoxylase 1 enzyme. So therefore, in chapter 8, we measure plasma level of uh, dicarbonyl in patients with uh, two, uh, type 2 diabetes uh, treated with uh, the angiotensin receptor blocker irbesartan. And we found no change in their no change in their levels. These results suggest that uh, angiotensin receptor blocker or at least irbesartan um, are unlikely to modify plasma levels of dicarbonyl stress. However, we can we cannot exclude the possibility that uh, in tissue MGO levels are changed are changed. So the only way to prove that and to prove that the glyoxylase uh, the, the, and to study the expression of uh, uh, glyoxylase 1 is in an experimental model. So we went to back to the laboratory and we investigate the rule of angiotensin 2 on the expression and the activity of glyoxylase 1 enzyme in tissue uh, uh, of mice infused with angiotensin 2. And uh, as reported in chapter 9, we found that angiotensin 2 is a um, uh, regulated glyoxylase 1 uh, expression in uh, kidney and liver of, um, of, uh, of, the, this, uh, of the mice and uh, with a concomitant increase of the carbonyl stress. So to summarize uh, what we have seen so far, I can say, I can conclude by saying that autoantibodies are increased in primary aldosterone patients, and these autoantibodies are stimulator of aldosterone, but they are not associated with serum decarbonyls and ages, in primary aldosterone patients. In patients with type 2 diabetes, irbesartan treatment does not affect plasma dicarbonyl levels. 
But our study have added some evidence for a rule of androtensin 2 in mice that can reduce the expression of glyoxylase 1 enzyme in tissue, thereby increase MGO derived age formation in tissue. So uh, uh, we can say that the glycation and RAS pathway maybe are combined but uh, further study are needed to, to be explored. Thank you for uh, your attention. I give now the word back to the Prorector. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Piazza, for your clear presentation. The opposition will be opened by the chair of the uh, thesis assessment committee, Professor Krom. He is professor of vascular medicine at the Department of Internal Medicine, at Maastricht University Medical Center. Professor Kohn. Uh, dear candidate, um, I thank you for this nice introduction of your thesis. And I was indeed intrigued after reading your thesis on all the novelties you were able to accumulate and describe in this, uh, 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 in this uh, manuscript. Um, I started reading the introduction and um, in that introduction, you mention the non-genomic and genomic effects of aldosterone uh, on the kidney. But you also mentioned that there are, and that was a new thing for me, uh, there are mineral corticoid receptors in other tissues in the kidney, like in the mesenchymal cells and in the podocytes. So there is, um, I. I See in your reaction, I, you couldn't understand me well. So there are also um, uh, uh, mineral corticoid receptors uh, in other cells in the kidney, um, in like the mesen uh, mesenchymal cells and in the podocytes. Then I want to ask you a question concerning uh, the systemic review you wrote in chapter two and that is uh, that I, I think it's, it's quite intriguing you describe how uh, the the tissue interstitial the the the, the tubular interstitial fibrosis develops in the kidney and that's something uh, uh, that is that is of uh, well uh, uh, clinical importance and you describe that um, predominantly Angiotensin 2 and endothelin are uh, 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 factors in the development of tissue interstitial fibrosis via epithelial to mesenchymal transition. Now is my question. Uh, I didn't see anything on aldosterone on that uh, with respect to the uh, epithelial to mesenchymal uh, transition, and especially so uh, in, in the, the role of aldosterone um, um, uh, in the tubular interstitial fibrosis. Could you uh, elaborate a bit on the role of uh, aldosterone in the, on that uh, EMT process? Okay, uh, I think as the opponent, thank you for uh, your. Uh... Uh, your kind for, you, for your question and for uh, your uh, uh, compliments. And um, so uh, I was trying to explain what is the EMT. We know that uh, 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 epithelial mesenchymal transition, uh, like uh, is involved in uh, uh, tubular interstitial fibrosis. At the beginning, it was known that uh, this. Uh, uh, epithelial mesenchymal uh, transition uh, was discovered um, in the embryogenesis, but also in the cancer. And uh, um, the epithelial, uh, the, uh, this, the change of the cells, the epithelial cells become uh, mesenchymal cells. So, uh, because the epithelial cells um, have, uh, have the type, uh, are characterized by some marker like. Uh, uh, tying junction and express a lot of ecadrine. So when they become uh, when they become uh, mesenchymal uh, cells, they uh, lose this uh, tight junction. So we saw uh, an increase, a decrease of the uh, of the decadrine, but also other marker. Uh, we saw an increase of other marker like uh, alpha SMA and uh, vimentina. 
so may is I, there... may I interrupt you? Yes. May I interrupt you? you. Um, I do understand that. I, I read that and I think that's interesting. But okay. you, in the end, you come up with two major drivers of this EMT, yeah. which is angiotensin 2 and endothelin. Yeah, because but we... we uh, sorry. What is the role of aldosterone? Because as you write in your introduction, aldosterone has also effects on missing primal uh, uh, cells and on podocytes. What could be the role of aldosterone in that EMT? In the EMT, uh, we didn't... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. The, um, we know that anzotensin 2, uh, that the major regulator of uh, aldos the aldosterone uh, is uh, anzotensin 2. And uh, anzotensin 2, can uh, uh, in, uh, can uh, induce the increase of uh, aldosterone, and uh, we observe that uh, uh, using these uh, transgenic mice, uh, that um, that uh, uh, they are, uh, the tubus interstitial damage was due, was due to this kind of uh, due, due to the angiotensin two, but uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, check the aldosterone. Uh, we know that the aldosterone can induce uh, inflammatory uh, damage, uh, but uh, in our study, we investigate only the function of angiotensin 2 and uh, endothelin 1. And we observed that uh, angiotensin 2 was able to increase the, the tubular interstitial fibrosis and the endothelin. Uh, one via the, endo, endo, uh, the ATB receptor. Uh, so we observe only by this uh, receptor, but we didn't uh, check yeah. with the, uh, the, the, the aldosterone. Uh, yeah. Have you, have you an idea or a suggestion how you would, how would you study the effect of aldosterone? Uh, would you, uh, could you elaborate on that? How, if, if you were to do a study and uh, find out what the effect of aldosterone is on EMT. How would you do that? Uh, if I elaborate a study, uh, maybe I can use this uh, uh, the, an uh, epithelial uh, cells. Maybe uh, I will use uh, epithelial cells. Maybe I will use uh, aldosterone, and uh, uh, after I will see if these epithelial cells will change the uh, we will change the expression, the, the marker that are specific for uh, the for the uh, for the epithelial mesenchymal, the for the epithelial, and I will check if it, uh, they translate into mesenchymal uh, cells uh, by uh, I will check the, the expression of the mesenchymal marker in these cells. So I will do at the beginning a dose response curve with a different uh, concentration of aldosterone to check mm -hmm. if the, the aldosterone can... Would, uh, you, would you add in that experiment also an angiotensin receptor blocker? Uh, with, I will add an, uh, a blocker of the mineral, uh, blocker, a mineral corticoid receptor uh, a blocker to see if the this action is due to by uh, mineral corticoid receptor the, the aldosterone can induce this uh, epithelial okay. mesenchymal transition by a mineral corticoid receptor but yeah we know that uh, yeah okay thank you very much for your answers i'll have to work back to the prorector thank you thank you professor Cohn. The uh, position will be continued by Professor Albertin. She's Professor of Human Anatomy at the Department of Neurosciences at the University of Padova in Italy. Professor Albertin. Hi. Dear candidate, thank you very much for your presentation. Very clear. My interest is about the um, evaluation of uh, uh, these advanced uh, glycation and the products. So, um, several studies have demonstrated the, the involvement of uh, uh, the advanced glycation product in the development of uh, uh, vascular dysfunction and uh, hypertension. 
Uh, I uh, saw the interest about the evaluation of uh, out antibodies. I think that the research will continue to develop all the methods for evaluating IGRIS uh, and uh, probably some markers uh, um, about evaluation particular uh, disease or situation. Uh, my question, among, among the factors that you have uh, had the opportunity to analyze uh, or just uh, to, to read in your uh, lecture, to, um, on which do you think there is, uh, uh, which are the marker or some substance that is uh, correctly in that moment important to study and why some marker that are important to evaluate? And uh, at the end, uh, um, to uh, um, analyze this, uh, um, this end product, uh, I saw that uh, there is important to use the uh, ultra performance uh, liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. Uh, my question is uh, there is a possibility to evaluate uh, with the other methods uh, or the research uh, are, um, wanted to found. Uh, a type of uh, technique to evaluate this uh, end product. Thank you. Hi, highly esteemed opponent, thank you for uh, your question. Uh, so uh, I will uh, start for the second uh, question about the this uh, the ultra uh, um, about the ultra performance uh, liquid mass uh, chromatography mass uh, spectrometry. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, this uh, technique is uh, well uh, um, is uh, the uh, I think is the the most uh, technique uh, um, sorry the is uh, uh, like uh, um, is a really sensitive technique and I think uh, is the best one and also is proved by uh, several study. Uh, from uh, the from the group of uh, Professor Casper, that the, uh, the uh, ultra performance lipping chromatography is the best way to detect uh, to to study to detect uh, the the glycation in uh, plasma and serum of uh, the of the of the uh, of the patients of different uh, uh, of different uh, from different uh, uh, like uh, kind of uh, uh, so, uh, so um, because also is a, a really sensitive uh, with this kind of uh, uh, um, with, with this kind of uh, uh, measure uh, technique, you can uh, uh, measure really low level of uh, uh, metaglyoxol in the serum, but also uh, is also used to measure. Um, to measure also in food or other kind of substrate. Uh, so uh, there are other kind of um, of technique like analyzer, but uh, um, I, uh, I I think the I think and also is reported that, that is uh, uh, the mass spec chromatography is the the ultra liquid uh, the ultra uh, the UPLC is the the best way. To detect this uh, the glycation uh, the glycation in the several okay. uh, substance. Yeah. And uh, what about the second question? Sorry about the. Uh, oh, my my question was uh, if there is uh, some particular marker if uh, you can uh, associate uh, with age and uh, with the development on uh, in some disease or uh, for example about the endothelium of the, the particular, if there is some marker that you can, um, it's important to evaluate uh, and uh, associate with the, the ages. Yeah, the inflammatory marker usually are, are um, correlated with the ages, so because we, uh, ages uh, uh, increase uh, uh, the inflammation, uh, so uh, like marker of uh, inflammation can be uh, detected to to see if uh, to as a marker of the age of uh, ages process process. Uh, so like marker of uh, inflammation uh, and uh, yeah in, yeah and uh, 
depend on what we want to uh, study. And we know that uh, these uh, uh, the ages is involved in every chronic kidney disease, uh, and the ages increase with the with the with the ages with the with the during the, the age. So yeah, there are different markers uh, that can be detected. Okay, thank you. Uh, I finished and pass the word to Prolector. Thank you, uh, Professor Albertin. The uh, next opponent is uh, Professor Danser. He is Professor of Pharmacology at the Department of Internal Medicine at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam. Uh, Professor Danser. Thank you, uh, Prorector uh, and uh, candidate, uh, Mrs. Candidate. Of course, I uh, would like first to uh, congratulate you uh, with and your team uh, with a nice uh, uh, thesis uh, which I have been reading uh, uh, with a lot of pleasure and um, so the question I would like and by the way I still see the correct and not myself on the screen I hope that's correct or uh, so the question I would uh, like to ask you uh, concerns first your chapter three um, where you have uh, extensively investigated um, the 82 receptor. And I recently noted that you have done a similar study on angiotensin 1 to 7 and the uh, mass receptor. And in both cases, your conclusion is that these receptors play, well, probably very little, if no role, maybe even at all, uh, with regards to the aldosterone synthesis in the uh, adrenal. So um, my question is actually, on what basis have these studies been done? What, what is the current evidence in patients, in man, in vivo, that let's say the 82 receptor angiotensin 1 to 7 truly would play a role? But why did you do this? Okay. I will ask the opponent. Thank you for uh, your uh, question. Uh, so in uh, chapter 3, we investigate uh, uh, the rule of uh, the protective arm of the uh, angiotensin uh, uh, of the RAS system, because we know that the RAS system um, is, uh, uh, can be divided into main part, where there is uh, uh, the classical pathway formed by ACE uh, angiotensin 2, uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, the protective arm of the RAS that consists in this H2 uh, receptor and uh, uh, mass receptor. And uh, we want to study, in this study, we uh, want to um, see if there is, uh, the, this, uh, this part of the RAS system play a cardiovascular protective role by counter-regulating the 81 uh, receptor mediated effect. Uh, so uh, what we did in this study, we, uh, in, uh, so before we, we initially uh, look at the presence of the uh, other receptor because and in, uh, we want to see if primary so in the primary in the context of yeah, so maybe, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. can I interrupt because of course I understand that but my question is in the on what basis so, yeah. did you do this yeah? because is there any evidence in humans that either AD2 receptor or mass plays a role let's say with regard to aldosterone what is the evidence so in the There's a lot of in vitro evidence, yes, but I mean you need strong in vivo evidence, of course. So why, yeah, so what? we study the presence. So in primary aldosteronism, we study the presence of this uh, uh, receptor. So the, the 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 protective arm, the AT2 receptor, the uh, the mass receptor. So the in the, this uh, uh, in the APA and uh, in the aldosterone producing adenoma and uh, uh, upper the, uh, adjacent tissue. And uh, we study the effect of the, uh, also the, the pharmacological effect of an agonist of the 82 uh, receptor, the, C, uh, the C21 uh, compound. Uh, but uh, in, this, in this study, we didn't, obs we observed that, uh, and we stimulate uh, uh, the, the, the cells, 
uh, for uh, 12 hours uh, with the, 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 the C21 uh, uh, drug. And we, um, we look at the expression of CP11 B2 that is known to uh, regulate the aldosterone, uh, that is the key enzyme in the regulation of the aldosterone, but also the uh, cortisol enzyme, the, the, the enzyme responsible in, this, in the cortisol production. And uh, after stimulate this, uh, the cells, the adrenocortical uh, cell line, so we use two different models, an adrenocortical cell line uh, and uh, the apatitis. Okay, now I think because of time, maybe we should also continue in a little bit different direction. Uh, so I understand that okay. you have focused on the 82 and the, and, and the mass receptor. Uh, I also would like quickly to go to chapter six, where you have studied the uh, autoantibodies. Uh, and okay. um, well, uh, uh, it's a bit confusing, but when I look at your chapter uh, six, uh, figure three and four, and also in your talk, you just mentioned it now, you said that uh, erbesatan, the 81 receptor blocker, uh, prevented the aldosterone rise. But actually, where are these data? Because I don't see it. Uh, you have in figure six, four, indeed, this rise in aldosterone. But there's no data on uh, on uh, uh, an ARP. So wh wh where is the evidence for this? Uh, uh, no, the, no, about the aldos the CP11 B2 gene expression. No, there is uh, in this figure three. Yes, but in figure three, you combined it with angiotensin two, and yes, it blocks, of course. No, but there, there is, is no effect the of the 81 uh, uh, autoantibody. So, and in figure four. Of course, you do see an effect of the antibodies, uh, uh, but there's no effect of, of, of um, the no, we, uh, blocker. In figure 3b, we, uh, we use irbesartan. If you see, we yeah. purify IgG isolated. So we stimulate the cells, the APA cells, with the IgG isolated from healthy donor and also from upper tissue. So the first two colon are cells isolated with uh, only IgG from uh, the first one with uh, uh, from IgG isolated from LT donor. And uh, the second one uh, are uh, uh, ac 15 cell line uh, stimulated with IgG purified from upper uh, patients. And we can see an increase in uh, gene expression of CP11B2. And we, uh, we also uh, did this experiment in presence of irbesartan. That is the other two colon. So we stimulate in presence of IgG isolated from the, uh, from the LT donor in presence of irbesartan and also IgG isolated from APA patients and irbesartan. And there is a yeah. uh, slight in uh, decrease of uh, CP11B2 gene expression. Sorry, yeah, I understand that. But you mentioned aldosterone, and that's, of course, what it's all about. So did you block the release of aldosterone? Yeah, but we, didn't, uh, we don't have the, 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 uh, the results. With, uh, we didn't show the aldosterone. We know in our... Uh, no, we don't have the results about the aldosterone secretion in this cell line with our bezartan. Okay, uh, I have one final question, if this is allowed. Uh, actually, uh, in preeclampsia, these autoantibodies are also greatly elevated, as you may know. But in that disease, aldosterone levels are low. How to combine this with your results? Uh, but uh, uh, preeclampsia and uh, uh, primary aldosteronism are uh, uh, completely the different uh, uh, model. Okay, we know that also uh, in preeclampsia, uh, the autoantibodies are really high. But uh, is uh, um, is uh, really difficult to combine uh, this kind because uh, we yeah in preeclampsia uh, uh, the yeah the women uh, are in a condition that uh, where there is a, a lot of hormone change everything is changed so uh, yeah it's completely different the situation so. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, the angiotensin 2 in this case uh, uh, could be, uh, yeah, the, the, not the aldosterone, but uh, the angiotensin 2 could be the, the, yeah, the most important point in this, uh, in, the, in preeclampsia. 
is actually also low. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I really uh, like to give back the word to the Pro-Rector. Thank you, uh, Professor Danser. Uh, the opposition will be continued by uh, Professor Hahn. He is Professor in Redox Modulation of Pharmacological and Toxicological Processes at the Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology at Maastricht University. Professor Hahn. Thank you, Mr. Pro-Rector. Dear candidate, uh, first of all, I'd like to compliment you with the uh, completing of your, your nice thesis. In this congratulation, I'd also like to involve your promotion team, all the co-workers, friends and family that helped you. I also like your cover, a maze, probably resembling your thirds. Although uh, the maze you depicted seems symmetrical, it's not symmetrical. And so things do not always seem to be what they are. The nice thing with these kinds of puzzles is that you can also start in the middle, the destination, and work yourself through it. A bit like the labyrinth of Dante you refer to in preposition, uh, proposition 8, where you state that you also can start with the origin and the way we interact with each other. Ultimately, based on your back cover, you found your way. So perhaps you can help me a bit through your maze. And in your thesis, you start with trying to find a way to connect two seemingly independent pathways, the RAS pathway and the glycation pathway. In our discussion, I'd like to start with one of the fundamentals. And please take me by the hand if I'm wrong. In chapter six, you determine the effect of an antibody to the AT1 receptor. As I understand, you confirmed that this antibody is present in the serum of the patient's you examined. You also experienced several experiments to see if this antibody could activate actually the AT1 receptor that was described in the literature. In the Chinese hamster ovary cells, you did not see a clear activation of the receptor by the antibodies, as you discussed on page 112, the second paragraph. You also checked as a control if the patient's serum didn't affect the angiotensin II effect. And also that didn't have, have an effect. And to, to me, this seems a bit strange. Uh, the, an antibody very efficiently bent, binds the receptor and binding would at least affect the angiotensin II response. But apparently you did not observe this. Could you comment on this? Uh, about um, the expression, sorry, can you repeat? So about the AT1 uh, receptor, um, will you repeat the, the question? Sorry. Uh, in your in your in your experiment, mm -hmm. you add the antibodies to the cells. Yeah. So the antibodies they will bind to the receptor. Yeah. But they didn't activate it, which was not in line with the with the uh, with the. Uh, uh, other literature, but binding of the antibody to the receptor will affect the effect of angiotensin II. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, in the, we we um, we saw that the um, that these uh, autoantibodies are able to uh, activate uh, to induce an increase in the aldosterone. Uh, secretion in uh, the CP11 B2 this is, uh, expression, but that we know increase the aldosterone secretion. Uh, and we did some experiment to see if uh, effectively uh, and, uh, these autoantibodies uh, can bind also the AT1 receptor, uh, like the, the experiment that were performed but, uh, by, um, the, from CAM. But uh, in our hand, this experiment was not able to show uh, the, um, the activity of AT, uh, autoantibodies uh, 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 the activity, uh, to activate the AT1 receptor because our results uh, show a really low activity for this uh, kind of um, for this kind of uh, uh, for this kind of uh, for this um, uh, experiment, uh, so we cannot use uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this data. Uh, we say that we did, but with this kind of uh, experiment, we cannot show. We we were not able to show the same uh, uh, the same data that uh, Cam show 
with uh, this this uh, kind of uh, uh, technique mm -hmm. because okay. there were cells transfected where we buy these cells and uh, we were not able to see an increase in activity in these cells. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe and... add, yeah, sorry. Can I answer? But the antibody, they will bind to your receptor. Did you agree? Yeah, uh, we have to demo. Yeah, we, we was demonstrated by Cam, and also our uh, uh, yeah our uh, the results that show an increase because we know that angiotensin two increase the aldosterone level, so we think that <laughs> yeah, antibodies are le are uh, able to increase also the yeah, uh, that that you you said already. Yeah, but it's strange that they bind, but they do not affect the effect of attention too. Might be a very simple solution might be that there were not enough antibodies to bind all the receptors? Uh, the, the, these autoantibodies, uh, they, they did uh, in, uh, in uh, maybe, I don't think they, we didn't perform uh, this, uh, maybe uh, is a good suggestion to do other experiments to see if this uh, uh, is uh, is uh, these autoantibody are able to uh, bind only the AT1 receptor uh, or uh, other receptor? But in uh, this uh, with the uh, yeah with uh, with the, our uh, uh, yeah with the knowledge that we have now, we we cannot prove that we don't know if this is a receptor uh, autoantibodies are able to bind the other uh, receptor. Okay. I understand that, that some more research is needed to compare your results to the results published in, in literature. And I see that time has finished, Prorector. Yes. So I have to uh, hand over the word to the Prorector and finish this nice discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Hane. Um, the opposition will be continued by uh, Dr. Brouwers. Uh, Dr. Brouwers is a teacher and researcher at the South University of Applied Sciences in Heerlen, the Netherlands. And the word is yours, Professor Bar Dr. Bravas. Go ahead. Thank you, Prorector. Uh, dear candidate, I would like to first like to compliment you with uh, connecting at least uh, two nations and also connecting different research topics. That must be very hard. Um, I once learn again learned that rodents are not humans, and humans are also not rodents, at least biochemically. I first have a question about chapter seven in which you found that uh, in 26 patients with an aldosterone producing adenoma, that their ele elevated autoantibodies to cancer angiotensin II type one receptor were not associated with the levels of serum, decarbonyls or AGE levels. And I was wondering uh, based on which study or studies did you actually expect that there should be or could be an association? What were their approaches and how do they differ from your approach? Okay, it's, uh, it's me to phone it. Thank you for uh, your uh, kind, uh, for your uh, questions. Uh, I will try to explain why we use this. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we try to find if there is a correlation with, between uh, primary aldosteronism and, uh, and the glycation. Uh, as uh, um, in uh, an experimental model of uh, hypertension uh, in uh, rats, uh, there was found that uh, angiotensin 2 is uh, able to increase the MGO formation in the, rate, in the vascular retinal of these mice. Uh, so um, we, uh, we hypothesized that uh, these autoantibodies uh, 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 that have uh, agonistic properties to the angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor are also able uh, to increase the MGO formation in uh, base of this, uh, in this, of this uh, of previous research. So we try to connect this, uh, so the, these two studies. So we try uh, to see if these autoantibodies um, in, uh, present in patients with aldosterone producing adenoma are able to uh, uh, activate uh, uh, the MGO formation via uh, angiotensin 2 uh, type 1 receptor. Uh, 
um, and via down regulation of glyoxylase 1, because in this study was observed that uh, angiotensin 2 increased the MGO formation via down regulation of glyoxylase 1. So we think that uh, uh, this autoantibodies with the angiotensin 2 um, activity can also uh, work like uh, angiotensin 2. Uh, Don't you think that you then skip one step? Because uh, I don't think you infuse, for example, angiotensin in these people, but are you aware of any levels of angiotensin 2 in these uh, patients? No, these patients have a high level of uh, aldosterone. And uh, yeah. So only downstream. So the aldosterone is, is high, but you don't know some. No, we, we yeah, they are uh, usually in these patients, the, the, uh, this, the renin angiotensin system is suppressed. So uh, usually, uh, yeah, only the aldosterone level are high uh, in these patients. So okay, then I would also like to go with you to the figure of that uh, chapter, figure seven point one. Um, I see there on the y-axis the uh, levels of the uh, outer antibodies. Mm -hmm. and, and can you tell me uh, uh, what the difference is between, for example, A and B? Uh, because I see actually in, in, in the B figure that the levels of out antibodies are 10 times higher than A and C, for example. Can you explain to me what happened there? Mm. So uh, between the A and B? Yeah, for example, because in table seven, Point two, I think I see that the 81 AA levels, the autoantibody levels, are around 11, 12 uh, units per ml. And I can see that in A, but in B, they are 10 times higher. The, uh, okay. No, but uh, maybe the, oh, okay, I invert the, the assist. Uh, oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> I think uh, there is a uh, yeah um yeah the auto antibodies uh, in in, uh, in B in B, uh, yeah uh, I invert the axis so yeah maybe yeah is there is uh, an error in the in the figure. Okay. So when X is not associated with uh, Y, then Y no, is associated yeah. with X either. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so yeah, are associated, but in the, yeah, the, um, the name in the axis are wrong, they are, uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> then, uh, do we have time for one more question? Yeah. Um, then I would like to ask something about uh, the, uh, about chapter eight, oh, sorry, nine it is, about glycogen one, uh, mm -hmm. expression. Uh, did you also measure glycogen 1 protein levels? Yeah. And expression. And is the... Uh, no, pro uh, protein, we, we measured the activity of glyoxylase 1 also. So can no, you... No, the protein, but not the, the glyoxylase 1 uh, in the immunoblot. No, we didn't measure. Can you then speculate about if you see a difference in uh, expression or in activity of the uh, glyoxylase 1? Sorry, no. because you measured gene expression, and you say I measured uh, glycogen one activity, but then that's corrected for total protein, right? Yeah. Activity. So do you think then that there are effects on the levels of the protein or on the post-vaccinational activation of the protein of the enzyme? Uh. The, um, we measure, yeah, we, um, yeah, because uh, the glow activities is uh, correlated with the, the protein content, uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, it's correlated with protein content. We see that uh, in, in glow one activities uh, uh, reduce in patient in um, after stimulation with the angiotensin uh, two. So so based on expression, I think it's. Uh... Uh, the, the activity is lower due to low amount of protein. Yeah, of this okay. enzyme. Okay, thank you very much. And I give the word back to the pro -rector.
Thank you, Dr. Brouwers. The opposition will be continued by Dr. Foulquier. He is assistant professor at the Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology at Maastricht University. Dr. Foulquier. Thank you, Mr. Proctor. Dear candidate, uh, well, first of all, I would like to compliment you and your supervision team for your thesis. Uh, very nice to read. And uh, like the previous opponent, I would like to also highlight the importance to work at the interplay between two systems. And it's always difficult, but it's often uh, from such investigations that uh, interesting discoveries arise. So I've been very uh, triggered by your investigations on the RAS and the glycation pathways. And so I have questions about your chapters eight and nine. Um, in your chapter eight, uh, on the IRMA2 study, you, you did an analysis from a subset of this uh, IRMA2 study in which uh, Irbezartan is being used as an angiotensin receptor blocker. I was uh, wondering if you know the rationale why, why Irbezartan was used, why these angiotensin receptor blockers and not Lozartan or Tenbezartan, why using Irbezartan in that study? In the, okay, I listen to Pony. Thank you for uh, your uh, question. Um, um, the the use of ibesartan, uh, uh, as we uh, I said before, uh, that uh, the uh, like antihypertensive drug are used in the in, uh, in type two diabetes uh, to uh, decrease the cardiovascular uh, disease. Um, yeah, the, the this study was uh, at the beginning. Uh, so, uh, so these patients, the, the patients uh, in, uh, in, the, the, in this study, in the study in chapter eight, are patients with the type two uh, diabetes and also a microbiota. And uh, this uh, study was uh, at the beginning conducted for, um, uh, for to, to study is, uh, this uh, um, the influence of ibesartan in microalbuminuria. And uh, the ibesartan was uh, able to um, to, uh, to to blunt the, uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to migrate the albuminuria. So we can see, we, we can say that. Uh, Ibesartan were able to uh, ameliorate. Um, yes, thank you. If I if I may just interrupt you, I was wondering why Ibesartan was used and why not uh, another herb. Because actually, uh, if you you may know that Ibesartan, like other herbs um, from this uh, drug class, they also show some beyond the eighty one receptor blockade. They are also able to uh, modulate or activate the PPAR gamma uh, signaling. And so there was a link with glucose metabolism there. So I wanted to know and let you discuss a bit, elaborate on the link between PIPAR gamma and ages also. Um, do you see here a link or, or do you but, think it could also influence the, the results from your study? But uh, during this, um, when they did this, uh, this, um, this experiment with the Bezertan, uh, the, they didn't use uh, the, um, the, the 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 so the inhibitor of uh, gluco the other drug like uh, drug enabled to lowering the glucose uh, so uh, we can be sure that it is an effect of uh, irbesartan uh, yeah yeah sure but i mean like beyond the 81 receptor blockade because you try to make a link between 81 and, and also uh, well the ras and glycation i was wondering whether the the effect of such herbizartan or telmizartan could also, like via their PIPAR gamma modulating activity, could also uh, impair the glycation or, or actually favor um, the reduction of, um, of glycating agents. But actually, well, I, th I think you, you didn't find any results here in this study on, uh, on the impact of herbizartan on ages. So um, I propose maybe due to time that we move on to the, the next chapter. Um, which I found very interesting because I've myself uh, used also uh, the Einstein 2 model many times. And I was very uh, uh, surprised to see that um, MGO is being uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, formed in this model. And I was wondering whether in this animal model, you, you have seen any detrimental effects of MGO directly, or how could you design a future study to look at the detrimental effect of MGO formed after uh, infusion of 
for the, about the uh, the um, chapter nine you mean in mice yes, yes. Uh, maybe another study could be because we observe only the effect of uh, angiotensin 2 maybe another study in mice could be also infused uh, if you want to see if uh, art also can uh, blunt this, um, the health benefit of the herbs uh, in, uh, in MGO formation. Maybe we can uh, infuse also uh, mice uh, with uh, angiotensin 2 and also irbesartan uh, to see if uh, uh, there is um, mm -hmm. a, de uh, a, decre um, a decrease in the formation of MGO. So we have to uh, clarify this aspect of the, if, uh, if the, uh, this increase of MGO is due to by 81 uh, receptor activation. So maybe we need to clear these findings because uh, we didn't find, we didn't observe uh, in a human study the effect of ARB on, on uh, uh, on glycation, but maybe this uh, because uh, in tissue is we observe in tissue that in tissue there was uh, uh, this uh, increase of uh, MGO uh, um, uh, of the carbon stress and also a decrease in glyoxylase one uh, enzyme. Very uh, short and final question actually, because um, you, you want to make the translation and see whether these results are relevant also in, in humans. But looking at your tables uh, from this study, um, table 9.1, 9.2, actually you have seen lots of differences in, in MGO or, or pre-ages, but only after three days of, uh, of infusion, but mostly nothing has changed after 28 days. So in very acute effects, of uh, angiotensin 2, it seems, but nothing on a more yeah, long term. So um, could you explain that? Because I couldn't see anything in the discussion on this topic. Yeah, maybe uh, after, uh, after three days, uh, um, uh, we see an increase in CML because... Uh, uh, As you will have noticed, uh, Mrs. Pietra, uh, the time for defending your thesis has passed. The committee will now withdraw to discuss the quality of your thesis and the quality of your defense. And I would like to ask you to um, remain here until we will um, come back with the results of our deliberation. Thank you.
Dear Mrs. Piazza, the degree committee here present online has assessed the quality of your thesis and the quality of your defense. And in view of its positive verdict and taking into account your previous qualifications, the degree committee has decided to grant you the degree of doctor. This is a joint degree. I come back to that later. Uh, but now I give the word to Professor Schalkbeck. He is authorized to confer upon you his academic distinction in accordance with Dutch and Italian university custom and law. Professor Schalkbeck. Thank you, Mr. Prorector. Maria, do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times, to be careful, honest, transparent, independent, and responsible? Yes, I promise. So by the authority vested in us by law and in conformity with the decision of the committee we are present online, I hereby confirm upon you Maria Piazza, the degree of doctor and grant you all rights attached by custom and law. As evidence of this, you will soon receive the degree certificate signed by the rector, the secretary, and the supervisor affixed with the official seal of the university shown by the bill. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Piazza, dear Maria, it's for me real a pleasure to honor you uh, and to be the first actually to congratulate you with your thesis, with your doctor title, and this is also on behalf of the promotion team, uh, Professor Rossi, Professor Sekia, and Norden Hansen. Really an honor for me. Well done, a very special moment also for us. The highlight also for you of a beautiful and nice period, I guess, uh, in Maastricht. And in my view, you graduation today in Maastricht is a big achievement also of course, a moment to look back. And, uh, and to look back, yes, your connection with Maastricht in your PhD period actually started with a joint PD PhD course, course Vascular Biology and Hypertension, organized by the universities of Padua and Maastricht. Initially, the idea was that you spent some weeks in our lab in Maastricht, but it turned out that this collaboration was in fact a joint doctorate program, implicating a stay for at least six months in Maastricht. That was also for you a surprise, an adventure actually, many uncertainties, but also with a lot of new opportunities. So you came to Maastricht and worked on two topics, the RA system and the glycation pathway, and especially the connection between these topics, a real challenge. So we had to adapt to a new working environment and also to the weather in the Netherlands. But you have managed this well, very well, I must say. And I'm sure this is in large part due to your work ethic as well as your personal traits. Never grumpy, always smiling and positive. And also in the field of our activities in the laboratory, the lab outings, Christmas dinner, guidance of students and colleagues, you was there and contributed to all these activities. You showed a great enthusiasm, curiosity to study the techniques used in my group. Analytical techniques with Jean and with Mario uh, based on UPLC and ELISA uh, measurements cell culturing with Maché and Vicky, uh, culturing uh, a lot of endothelial cells. And actually, I must say, a lot of that work is not included in your thesis, but you did really a lot of work in that regard. And also, of course, working with data from large cohorts under the supervision of Norden. And actually, 
you did it all successfully. So really great uh, compliments for that. And it's not very easy eh, to combine experimental research with working with large cohorts, but you did it very well. And particularly the last part of the thesis was hampered, unfortunately, by circumstances completely out of your own control, the COVID pandemic. And this was really a hard time with many uncertainties and worries, especially for you because of the severe situation in the north of Italy, including Padua at that time and somewhat later also in the Netherlands. But you have shown a tremendous flexibility by managing this all to complete your thesis under these difficult, difficult conditions and with never complaining about this. So unfortunately, your stay in Maastricht was abruptly ended in March 2020 and by the closure of the airspace. And because of COVID, of course, and he was able to return to Padua with the last flight actually from Shalwa to Padua without the possibility saying goodbye. So just in time. And I know you was really sad about that, but because of the circumstances, I think also the best you could do. And this all after a year of hard work in Maastricht, written down in, I think, three very nice chapters in your thesis, with one already been published in Diabetic Medicine, and the second one nearly finished for submission. And the evaluation committee was also impressed really satisfied by the work done, performed under difficult conditions. And by this, I would also like to thank uh, the, the committee and to take the opportunity here to thank, so the evaluation committee uh, here present for the work and also the contribution, especially, of course, our special guest, Professor Albertin from the University of Padua. Many thanks. And of course, I also would like to thank Professor Rossi and Professor Sekia for the collaboration. And I'm really happy that the collaboration will be continued with the ITN project MindShift. Thank you so much for this. So Maria, dear Maria, also because of time restrictions, I have to finish. It was a really, really big pleasure to have you in the group. Great respect how you manage this. And now you are here eh, uh, having a PhD, the starting point in my view of a wonderful career in biomedical science in Italy. And again, congratulations. And in this congratulations, I would also of course like to include your parents, your husband, Andrea, your family in Salemi at Sicily. Yeah. <laughs> Friends, colleagues, all congratulations. Maria, all the best to you. Thank Very you. well done. Well, thank you. <laughs> Esteemed Dr. Piazza, um, dear Maria, um, it's my great pleasure to congratulate you as the second person with your joint doctoral degree at Maastricht University and at the Università degli Studi di Padova in Italy. And I do that also on behalf of the Board of Deeds. And maybe I can share with you some impressions from the degree committee. Uh, we have written, we have seen a very nicely written thesis, well published papers, and it is a combination of clinical and and fundamental studies, and the studies have been done in quite uh, difficult conditions, as Professor Schalkweg already has mentioned. And in the defense, you have shown to be able to, uh, to um, have a good uh, discussion on at, at an academic level, and we are very satisfied with that. And we are also very much aware of the various difficulty, the complexity of topics. It was not an easy study with many different elements. And I think you have shown that you have demonstrated you have been grown as a person, but also as a scientist in a European context. 
And that's a great compliment. And I would like to not only to congratulate you, but also your four um, supervisors with this, uh, with this result in terms of, an, of a very good thesis and an, a very good defense. And I would like indeed to include in my uh, congratulations, uh, Professor Kasper Schalkwerk, uh, Professor Gian Paolo Rossi, uh, Professor Teresa Maria Secchia, and Nor Dr. Nord in Hansen. Congratulations with this results. Excellent. And also, of course, I would like to include in my congratulations your partner, your parents, and the other members of your family. And also, I think quite a lot of colleagues and friends, uh, and all those who have been, um, have contributed to uh, uh, your thesis, and finally, in your defense today. Um, and I'd like to, um, to, um, to, um, at the end of this uh, academic session, um, to um, thank all the members, not only of this degree committee, but also the members of the uh, thesis assessment committee. And in particular, the external members of the committee. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Maastricht University and University of Padova uh, appreciate your contributions to both committees. Thank you very much. And hereby, I close this ceremony, but we will congratulate you as a committee after a ceremony, but not in the live stream. Thank you all viewers and followers of the live stream. This ceremony is being closed. <laughs>